In the calm summer months, it's easy to take a warm, sunny day for granted. But in Ohio, there's always a dark cloud on the horizon. But before the blizzards, hurricanes, rain, and floods strike, there's a forecast. Thanks to the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Wilmington. This broadcast originates from the National Weather Service office at Wilmington, Ohio. And now here are the river stage forecasts for selected rivers in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. The forecasts and stages are valid at 8 a.m. The Weather Service, the Wilmington office as a field offices, issues all watches, warnings, and forecasts for our forecast area. Wilmington is central to the location that we cover. We cover metropolitan areas from Columbus to Dayton to Cincinnati and areas north of there. Quite a good-sized area. The National Weather Service is composed of several different centers at all different types of national and local levels. There are national centers that provide services to the country as a whole. There are six regional centers, and then there are 122 different forecast offices in the field, such as this one here. I think a lot of people probably associate us with the warnings that are issued when they see them come across on their TV. Um, a lot of people also realize that we do issue forecasts and go to internet websites or other sources for forecast information. And in Ohio, there's a lot of weather. Ohio weather can be very changeable. Um, we have a, a lot of weather patterns here with clash between warm air and cold air. And we do have the four seasons. There are a lot of high impact events that we can see, such as tornadoes, severe thunderstorms, floods, and winter weather. So it's a pretty exciting place to be able to forecast weather. How hard it is to forecast the weather here compared to other parts of the country, I guess would depend on who you're asking. Because here in Ohio, if someone thinks that forecasting winter storms is hard, which most of us do, um, that will obviously be harder than forecasting for southern Arizona where they don't deal with that. But places like southern Arizona, southern California do deal with things like wildfires and monsoon type rain and even dust storms that we don't have to deal with here in Ohio. So. Um, unfortunately, there is no real good corner of the country to go if you're looking to avoid weather altogether, but it is very challenging to forecast here. And one of our most scenic natural resources can also cause the most dangerous natural disasters. There have been 44 presidentially declared disasters within the state of Ohio. Of those 44 disasters, 36 of those involved flooding of some kind, whether it be flash flooding or river flooding. So just to give a feel for the, the dangers, the two dangers of, of flooding, uh, not only nationwide, but within Ohio, more people are killed by flooding than any other type of severe weather event. My job here at the National Weather Service is service hydrologist. What that job means is keeping an eye on rivers, as well as flash flood potential throughout our area of responsibility. Forecasting the rivers impacts a, a lot of people, obviously people who live and work along the river, such as the barge operators, um, recreational areas along the river is crucial to not only people's lives, but their livelihood as well. The 1913 flood uh, pretty much remains the, the deadliest event within the state of Ohio in terms of uh, over 460 people lost their lives, 123 in Dayton alone, and this particular flood event was uh, occurred in, in March um, over a period of four days where 9 to 11 inches of rain was over essentially just the Great Miami uh, River Basin, but just the enormity of this type of flood. And uh, back in those days, people lived right along the river. There were thousands of people whose homes were completely destroyed. Um, a lot of uh, you know, businesses also destroyed. Can we have a rainfall event of that magnitude again? Certainly, we, we sure can. But in this day and age, more there is a little bit more control as far as where people are allowed to, to build and to live, as well as the flood protection. But since 1913, weather forecasting has gone from partly cloudy to crystal clear. 
Well, it's changed tremendously due to the technology that's available, the observations that are available. When I first came in the Weather Service, the satellite technology was really close to its infancy. Now we're using Doppler radars, which detect motions in the atmosphere. So we can see motions as they're occurring in storms, and that's a huge benefit when we're looking for areas that may produce severe weather. Each day, twice a day, we release a weather balloon, and attached to that balloon is an instrument called a radio sound. And as the balloon travels up through the atmosphere, that radio sound actually transmits back to the ground information about temperature, dew point, pressure, and we can determine the wind speed and wind direction at each altitude. So basically that gives us a picture of what the atmosphere looks like. To make a forecast, there's all sorts of different data that we look at. Um, it's almost endless amounts of data. We, of course, look at what's going on now. That's rule number one. So we have tools, other than looking out the window, we have satellite, radar, observational data. We actually have observers that volunteer and give us current conditions, and past conditions are just as important. So it's our job as meteorologists to piece all those different types of data together. We can get detailed to exact counties where the rain is expected, exactly how much, the temperature we can get within a few degrees, and the timing of weather and precipitation we can get to within even 15 minutes. Now for your short-term forecast. Scattered showers will develop and move across the tri-state area 4 through 4 p.m. The National Weather Service is important because our prime mission is to save lives and protect property. So we play a big part in people's lives every day. Friday night and Saturday, mostly clear. Lows in the mid-40s. Highs in the upper 60s.